ban email, ban internal email. You can still use email for customers, but ban internal email. We use an all staff group for the team messages and also connect with them by email. Are there any guidelines on when you would use chat and when you would use email for internal communications? Well, that's a great question, Graham. And I'm actually gonna suggest to you that you don't ever use email for internal communications. Chat is useful and we'll talk about that, but I don't recommend using email for internal communications. The reason for that is that email is quite a kind of formal communication method, right? When we're writing an email to someone, we need to say, dear so-and-so, here is my email and I have a request for you. Kind regards, hope you're well, signature. And that's a bit weird to send to a colleague who you probably have a pretty close and casual personal relationship with when they're sitting right next to you or even if you've got a geographically distributed team, they're on the same team as you, no matter where they are location wise. And so my recommendation for that reason is that you don't actually bother with a internal email for that kind of communication. Any internal communication that happens inside your business should either be in chat, which has some challenges, or should be in some other project management or task management or workflow system. Now, there's heaps of options out there. It might be Asana, it might be monday.com, it might be Trello, it might be Notion. There's lots of different apps. Ideally, you wanna choose one that has an, like a kind of communication log assigned to tasks. And so let's say you have project X, I'm building a building, maybe I'm constructing a house, and you know within that there will be a feed of updates and comments from people who are working on that project and so we happen to use asana for that inside our business now that's one reason it's less formal communication so it's easier to rapidly communicate with your team if you're not using email second is the distraction factor if your team are expected to be in their email or checking their email for any internal communications within your business then they're going to be stuck in their email inboxes all day and because they want to be expedient and productive team members, in their minds, they probably think, well, if I keep my email open all day, then that'll keep the boss happy, right? And so what ends up happening is they're going to potentially be distracted by external customer emails all day long while they're waiting to see the emails that you might potentially send them. So that's also not great for productivity either. They're probably gonna have alerts configured so their new emails pop up on their desktops because they don't wanna miss an email for you. Uh -uh, that's a big issue because that means that people get stuck in their email all day long. They can't do any deep work and effectively they get stuck in this interruption factory of constantly getting pinged by emails. So my best practice is this. You use chat only when it's urgent. Chat is the equivalent of walking up to somebody's cubicle, knocking on the door and saying, hey, are you busy right now? And you wouldn't do that to your colleagues in the office all day long about every issue. So be very sparing about how you're using chat inside the business because that's the kind of thing that people probably will have an audible alert or maybe even a pop-up alert. And I have made other videos about how you can manage your notifications to make them a little more usable so they're not completely overwhelming. But with your chat, you wanna use that as sparingly as possible. But you wanna have a second system inside the business and that second system should be your task and project management system, which ideally has space for non-urgent communications. So communications that are related to a task or related to a project, but are non-urgent because chat is gonna interrupt, but your task management system will not immediately interrupt people. Ban email, ban internal email. You can still use email for customers, but ban internal email. Now, sometimes people will ask, well, you know, Pete, if we're telling everyone to turn off their email inside the business, what about emails from customers? And to that, I would say, some of your roles inside the business may be responsible for being responsive to customers very quickly. If you run a help desk or a customer service type role of some sort, you're probably gonna have people in your business that are dedicated to being in their email all day long. That's fine, but that's only certain people within the business. It shouldn't be the whole company. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius. Or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack, or your workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.